Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy D. Lloyd. So today I'm going to be bringing you guys who I think are the 10 worst players in the NBA of all time. Now, obviously, this is a objective list and some players you're going to agree with, some players you're not going to agree with. So go ahead, let me know in the comment section below who do you think are some of the worst players in NBA history. And also go ahead and let me know some of the players who you think don't deserve to be on my list. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the list. So at number 10, I have my man Leon Smith. Now, Leon Smith was originally drafted by the San Antonio Spurs in the 1999 draft in the first round. However, before he even played a game for the Spurs, he was traded to the Dallas Mavericks, where he also never played a game. He was released in February of 2000 due to psychological concerns. Now, after finally being released from the psychiatric ward several weeks later, he was finally able to make it back onto an NBA roster, but that didn't come until 2002, where he played 14 games for the Atlanta Hawks. Now during that time he averaged two points a game, two rebounds a game, and only had three assists total throughout his whole career. After that he signed to the Milwaukee Bucks, never played a game for them before finally being released, and then he finally signed to play for the Seattle Supersonics in 2003, but he only played one game for them before being released. And that was it. No one's ever heard of him since. Never played in the NBA jersey since then. And that is why he is number 10 on my list. Coming in at number 9 is going to be Monk Petir out of China. Now, he made his professional debut overseas in 1991. It wasn't until 2001 and 2002 where he finally made it over and played in the NBA for the Denver Nuggets. Now, during his first year, he did average 5.1 points a game. Now, although he had a solid big man frame at 6'11", 290 pounds, he was not able to put anything together after that season, only scoring a total of 17 points throughout his final two years in the NBA. But he did win a championship ring with the 2002 and 2003 San Antonio Spurs, where he contributed a whopping 0.8 points a game and 1.2 fouls per contest throughout his whole career he only averaged 3.4 points a ball game so he is number nine on my list now i will probably say his name wrong but at number eight on my list it is nikolos skitavili who was the fifth overall pick during the 2002 nba draft another player coming from overseas he played with the denver nuggets and as far as we know by rumors the nuggets reportedly never even seen him play before drafting him with the fifth overall spot now the rumor was that he's supposed to be a seven foot stretch four who's supposed to be able to knock shots and give you height so how can you go wrong with a seven footer well apparently a lot could go wrong during his four year nba career he played for a total of six nba teams only averaging 2.9 points a game and 1.8 rebounds so he is coming in at number eight on my list coming in at number seven is Michael Ruffin. Now this guy was just straight up pathetic. He did somehow manage to play 10 years in the NBA, but I cannot imagine how he was able to stay in the league that long. During his time in the NBA, he totaled 716 points, which you would think is not bad. That ended up being 1.7 points per ball game. But the crazy part is he had 942 personal fouls, which averages 2.3 fouls per ball game so during his 10 year NBA career Michael Ruffin was able to produce more fouls than points throughout his career don't know how he played in the league for 10 years but somehow he was managed he managed to do it and I'm sure he made some pretty decent money throughout his career so I'm sure he's not too mad to be one of the 10 worst players of all time at number six on my list we have Anthony Bennett. Now, a lot of you guys already know about Anthony Bennett. The first pick in the 2013 NBA Draft. Just to show you how bad he was, he was the first overall pick. And in the same season, during his rookie year, he was sent down to the D-League. Could never really get anything going whatsoever. His jump shot wasn't there. Wasn't that good on the boards. Really did not provide anything whatsoever. And now he would be lucky if he finds himself on the NBA roster next season. Now, I believe only 22 years old. He does technically have time to try to turn things around. But from the performance I've seen, Anthony Bennett is one of the worst players I have seen in NBA history. Coming in at number five on my list, we have Manute Bowl. Now this guy was a second round pick by the Washington Bullets back in 1985. This guy was 7'7", extreme height, very lanky, only 200 pounds, 
but his rookie campaign, he averaged five blocks a game on 26 minutes, but throughout his career, he was never really able to duplicate that. Despite his size, he did average 3.3 blocks per game throughout his career, only averaged 2.6 points a game off of 18 and a half minutes. So not a very productive player, and even late in his years, he was pretty much relegated to a three-point spot-up shooter. So not the most productive career, and he really wasn't that good besides the fact that he was 7'7". So that's why he's on this list. Coming in at number four on our list is Kwame Brown. Now this guy was just an absolute joke. He was the first overall pick in the 2001 NBA draft. Coming out of high school, this guy had huge expectations. Coming in at 6'11", 270 pounds, but he was just not able to put anything together. The guy had probably some of the worst footwork that I've seen in NBA history. The guy was an absolute joke, but he got plenty of chances throughout his career. Now he has probably the best numbers statistically on this list, averaging 6.6 .6 points a game, five and a half rebounds, but that comes at 22 minutes per ball game. He maxed out at 30 minutes a game playing in Washington, and then the two seasons with the Lakers, he averaged 27 minutes per ball game and then starting the majority of those games. But the best news that comes from Kwame Brown, if you are a Lakers fan, he pretty much got you a couple of championships. He was part of the re part of the trade that brought Paul Gasol to LA. So if you're a Lakers fan, at least you could thank Kwame Brown for that trade. At number three on our list is another Laker, this time Javaris Crennington. He is number three on the list. He was the first round pick for the Lakers in 2007, 19th overall, but he only played 22 games for the Lakers before being traded away. He really wasn't that good. Out of Georgia Tech, he was thought to be a solid point guard, but during this time, he only averaged 5.3 points a game, 1.8 assists, but he did average 1.2 turnovers, so almost just as many turnovers as assists. He will always be known for the whole locker room gun incident with Gilbert Arenas where they were both suspended for the remainder of the 2009 season. But it's kind of ironic because the very next year he got arrested for murder charges. He is now currently serving a 23 year manslaughter sentence. So that is Javaris Crittington. He's currently locked up. Didn't do anything in the NBA and he clearly messed up his life outside of the NBA as well. At number two on the list is Cherokee Parks. Now this guy won a national championship with Duke back in 1992. He was drafted 12th overall in the 1995 draft by the Dallas Mavericks, but this guy absolutely was not good at all. And I don't know how he averaged 12 points a game during his playing days at Duke, but on the offensive side of the ball, he clearly struggled, only averaging 4.4 points a game. On the defensive side of the ball, he was even worse constantly letting players blow past him in the post, not really getting a lot of rebounds, and still averaging two fouls per game. So Cherokee Park's number two on the list, but there's somebody by far who's worse than probably everybody on this list. So at number one, we have Son Yu, another player drafted by the Lakers in that same 2007 NBA draft. He was drafted in the second round, and this guy was just absolutely terrible, you guys. Only played 10 games throughout his NBA career, but I am going to give him one thing. He did probably have one of the most impressive NBA debuts in NBA history. He only played five minutes, but during that five minutes, he was able to rack up four total fouls and two turnovers. Probably one of the most impressive debuts ever. He only played 10 ball games before being released, before basically the Lakers decided, hey, this was a huge mistake. He needs to go ahead and go elsewhere. He had six points during his whole NBA career and 10 total fouls. Three turnovers as well. Really didn't do anything at all. Terrible stats across the board. 0.6 points during his career. No rebounds. And then one um, foul per game. Definitely a terrible player. It's kind of sad the Lakers have two players in the same draft class who are both on this list, but that's what it is. Had a terrible draft that year. Sonyu, absolutely terrible. If you want to see him, go ahead and look up his debut. That was awful as well. But that is my list. Like I said, this is objective. This is my list. Don't hate on me too much, but let me know in the comment section below who do you agree with, who do you disagree with, and also let me know who are some of the worst players that I missed that are on your list that are not on mine. And also, let me know what top 10 video you guys would like to see next for this top 10 series. It's your boy, D-Lord. I'm going to see y'all next time. Peace.